So good day once again, and uh, welcome to this class, um, the Technopreneurship 101 for Engineers. So our topic for today is about um, business model. So we will provide you the introduction to um, business model. All right. So I hope everyone is in good health. Yep. Good morning. Good day. So I request everybody to mute their microphones as well. Okay, can we, we should begin now? So it's already um, so what is really a business model? No? So um, we will talk about the business model, but uh, what is its definition? So <clears throat> a business model, as defined by Investopedia, Investopedia, <laughs> sorry. So a business model is a company's core strategy for profitability doing business. So it's a, it's a company's core strategy. So this is like something that you put into um, a document to determine if your business is actually gonna be doing well no, in terms of profit. So models generally include information like products or services, the business plans to sell, the target markets, and any anticipated expenses. So you're looking at the financial aspect. So also you're looking at the ways, no, how to sell your products. So these are the things that being defined here. So these are the two levers of uh, the two levers of a business model are the pricing and the costs. So how much are you gonna sell your product at what price? based on the cost to produce that product. So this is how the investor uh, defines the uh, business model. Right. But basically, uh, if I have to summarize it all, uh, business model is actually just simply a representation of how a company makes or intends to make money. So how are we gonna generate income for our company or our startup or for any type of business. So, so every business out there must have its own business model. So how are we gonna make money? So this is just a representation. There is a template, there is a guide. So people also plan, develop business plans, but within that business plan, what is our business model? How are we gonna make money? So um, for, we, for, for the next two, sessions we, we gonna discuss this it's a bit lengthy no but this is the very important aspect as well no of our subject technopreneurship 101 and um we need to define it properly such that we will be able really to um capture uh, everything how we strategize our marketing plans um in terms of generating profit for the company and we will be talking some examples about the how 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 companies like uh, big companies or startup companies make money you know, through through <clears throat> looking into their business model okay so this is the as the most basic you know, definition that we can uh, provide you no know, for a business model it's just simply a representation of how a company makes or intends to make money. If somebody will ask you, hey, uh, what is your business model? So you would really look into how your startup, your company will be generating profit you know, from, from this. All right, so we'll discuss uh, more on this. Okay, so different companies have different business models, all right? So you will hear different things about Company A, B, C, D, D later on now as we go along with this presentation. So um, a business model is also defined as a description of how your business runs. So somehow uh, we touch on that. So the rationale of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. So there are three terminologies here that we would want to dissect. No? Uh, organization creates the post delivers and captures value. So every company 
needs to define this. Now, as a startup, your startup, you guys now who, who intends to um, develop your own startup, we need to think about how do we create, deliver, and capture value. So value, no value. So every time we talk about value, um, we get, we're gonna have to be also be very clear about this. Um, we discuss about some of this during our session on design thinking. No? So during the customer journey, so offering products or services that uh, will have value to the the consuming public or the customers, the identified customers that you have. So some example here is just a uh, comic strip, no? So for, for the Jollibee, so how do we make money no, in this business? So the, the, the company um, for a very long period of time have been doing this. It's not just about how do we make money, but how do we compete with the competition? Remember that uh, Jollibee is our very own flagship um, fast food chain, no? But before this, there is McDonald's, right? So how do we make money in this business? And at the same time, how do we make money even or despite the competition with the McDonald's out there? Now, we need also to understand who is our the customer. So uh, many would always say that when somebody is asked, who is your customer? And then somebody will just ask even the owners of the company, it's everybody. No, so there's something um, not entirely wrong there, but you you don't, I think, exactly understand how or who is the specific customers that you have. You know? So so for, for Jollibee, you might tell yourself that, well, it's really true that everybody, you know, because everybody comes to Jollibee. But um, if, if you look at it, do you think that um, those uh people like the the rich no the rich the rich the class a b segment the market segment uh still visit Jollibee you might wonder or ask yourself about that but it may not no so there will there is a specific segment in the market that actually your customer and it is up to you to define no, those customers now you develop um, you, you have a business, but what what value do you offer to your customer? So, so So for Jollibee, what do you think is the value of for the customer? So by offering products and services, you have to question ourselves. Now, as a startup founder, is later on, or now, right now. So, what is the value that we are offering to the customer? So we have to look into that. We have to think about that. Are we giving value or um, others have already provided this value, but we, we're no longer offering an alternative you know, or even um, uh, better value to the, the customer. So we have to look into this. So what do we mean by create, deliver, and capture? So we have a Jollibee as a business entity here, and then we have, of course, the consumer, no? or typically for Jollibee, popularly known, uh, the Jollibee has been operating. So I don't have stocks, <laughs> by the way, no Jollibee, I'm not promoting, but it's just a good exercise because we can relate to as our local enterprise. So, so we create value, we deliver value, we capture value. So how... how how are we, what do we mean by this? Now, so first of all, we need to identify uh, Jollibee. Who is the primary target of the Jollibee? If, if we look back at the operations of Jollibee, their marketing campaign really focused on the kids. No? So if you're, I don't know guys, but it, um, the, there was a song before that I could still remember in my head. No? So I love you Sabado, pati na rin linggo. Uh, Intay ka lang Jollibee, nandyan na ako. No? So, panlasang Pilipino. But the, the, the marketing campaign really focused on the, 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 the kids, no? the kids. And every time, and be, be, because of the food that they offer, like chicken, um, kids love chicken and spaghetti, the panlasang Pinoy, which is medyo, um, uh, ano siya, no? Nang sweet flavored na spaghetti because 
the original spaghetti in Italy are actually not sweet. No? So, ang, ang, ang spaghetti good originally is mura siya o ganang full of like ganang tomatoes. No? So, uh, bitter, somewhat bitter or it's a combination of like there's wine as, as well. No? So, I, I watched a friend of mine before cook the spaghetti, Italian spaghetti. is an Italian. He cooked the spaghetti and it's really different taste to the Jollibee we have. So, Jollibee was able to really develop a product no, na uh, swak sa panglasang Pinoy. Uh, so, so they created this. No? So, and then they provided this. And then, of course, with a different taste uh, that kids love, that people, people love, then they, they kind of deliver and capture that no? for, for, for the company, that for, for the customers that they have. Uh, so when every time the kids wants to go to the kids want to go to Jalabi, no? so they tag along with them their their parents. So in, in a way, they're focusing on parang family. No? The target market is the, the family, but they tried to start with the marketing strategy towards the kids. No? So so they, they love the food. No? So um, that's why uh, it's it's now a family parang family oriented na na, na uh, I don't know, not a restaurant. Um, yeah, if you if we know that Jollibee is also operating outside the country, right? In the US, they're putting a lot of stories right now. So, so Jollibee is also operating in UK. So this is our case study, kumbaga, no? So I'm not promoting Jollibee as well, but this is our very own company in the Philippines. No? So might as well um, give a very familiar example. So. Jollibee is really uh, expanding no? because uh, their company is kind of saturated already here in terms of growth here in the Philippines. So they expanded outside no? and they've been putting a lot of restaurants across the globe no? in Singapore, uh, Hong Kong. No? So, uh, so ako na share every time we travel no? so, uh, with my wife. So we, we go to every respective Jollibee is out there, no? so outside the country. No? So try to explore it. Uh, what's the taste? No? Is the taste different? And to tell you honestly, uh, it remains true to their, to their formula. No? And people love it. No? You, you'll see a lot of videos outside the country. Now, they're, they're targeting uh, the Filipino communities no? if they are operating outside the country. No? So, so that's how they target. So very specific yung customer nila. So they know uh, Filipinos love Jollibee. They feel like at home in Jollibee. Uh, it's like a, this, this is the Philippines um, every time they go to the restaurant. So uh, it, it just, the, 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 in the previous slide, we, we kind of discussed about this. No? So the Jollibee business create products and services that the consuming public or the customers would love. No? So they, they kind of develop these products, test this product before really launching it in the market. You know, how many times do have, did they have to test this? No? So it's not just about really developing it, but really capturing, you know, the capturing the taste of the, 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 the Pinoy's. No? So, and then they provide these services, deliver these services to the restaurants, right? So they have different um, um, ways no, to provide these products to the customers. And of course, I mentioned about the, the family. No? So the, how Jollibee targets the, the, the marketing campaign that they have. No? So uh, of course, um, the revenue. No? So they generate revenue out of these products and services that they provide. And we know this is a multi-billion pesos uh, business already. No? So. Um, yeah, so they're making profit. And as Jollibee is uh, growing bigger, you know, so they, they try to beat the competition as well. You know? So in the Philippines, so the, the market is like overwhelmingly um, led by Jollibee you know, compared to um, McDonald's. So, so they actually bought these uh, different companies that uh, existed as well, you know, like the startups, like the Mang Inasal, the, of course, um, Chow King, you know, to, to control the market. So there is still some competition, but, you know, uh, McDonald's just a few percent you know, of the 
a fast food market right now. So in return, uh, because they develop a very good product, they were able to capture value. And so in return, so they're very profitable as well. Okay. So some of the dimensions, so we go to textbook cases now. So some dimensions of business focus on the elements, right? So the ingredients, processes, structures that enable a company to make money and create value for customers includes one. Number one, this is the most important part, I think, you no know, value proposition. And we will discuss a bit more on this. Uh, actually, this today is dedicated to that. You know? So this is very important. So value proposition. So we will always be talking about this. What will be the value that the customer gets from you in your products or services. Uh, second is target customer segments. So we, we cannot just simply say our customer is everybody. There must be somebody or a group of people that would be the uh, customer segments, no? the customers that we will have for our products or services. Then how are we going to kind of like establish good relationships to our customers? So if we define them, our customers, how do we go about making a good relationship you know, with our customers? Then next is distribution channels. So how are we going to go about our business? So we'll talk about this uh, a lot more on the, when we go to the BMC part. What are the core capabilities, the revenue model, are we gonna make money? Who are our, partner, our partners uh, for this business, for this startup? So partners are different from customers. No? So customers, uh, as mentioned before, uh, they're the persons or individuals or companies who are willing to um, shell out money no? to um, like buy the products or services that we offer to them. But uh, of course, no? as a customer, we always look into, is there a value to this? So we always go back to that no? every time we buy products. No? So if we buy a, a refrigerator, what does this refrigerator provides me value? No? So of course, as a refrigerator, ang refrigerator na to will keep our food fresh, right? Our vegetables fresh. So that's the value there. Um, the cost structure. Uh, how are we in terms of operational costs? No? So what will be our, for example, are we going to buy equipment to start our business or are we going to rent out? So some of the things will be discussed in the cost structure, right? So this is kind of spread. No? Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to show you later about that template. So how would you describe your business model? So this is always being asked when we run a startup company. Like every time we pitch, some people are gonna ask us, um, how, how do we describe our business model? So, so we would be able to elaborate on this as well now in a few sentences or if they have plenty of time, then we're gonna discuss everything, okay? So it would, it would be great if there is a template for this not to help out immediately capture in one in one page summary um what is our business model so again it's just a representation no? so from the definition okay so uh, some textbook <laughs> definitions or uh, discussions here so business modeling is a process framework and a tool so it's just for us, no, so for for a company to um, digest what is happening or what is gonna happen to the company when we establish it, and you would notice that there are companies existing uh, right now that they they're not even aware now of there is really a process of framework at all. Uh, for example, the MSMEs right now, the medium, uh, the micro, small, medium enterprise, like. Even those MS, no, the micro and small companies like the Sari Sari store, uh, they don't look at this. But this is very important when you want to really um, grow your 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 company. 
So second is the sketch the building blocks of your business or product idea. So on paper, no, on paper. So again, this is just a the planning part, no. So the document the assumption. So this is gonna test one uh, provide you a test on how to approach the market. What will be your strategy? So we will put them together in one document. So so somehow um, you've heard of a lot about. The business plan. No? So people will ask you before, okay, well, do you have a business plan? No? Especially if um, you, you're about to take off with your business and you need capitalization and you go to the to the bank and ask for a uh, loan no? because yeah, you want your uh, company to, to be funded by the banks. No? So that's the traditional way of starting a business. No? So, so the bank will ask you in return, so may I see your business plan? No, so this entire thing that we are trying to discuss uh, actually is um, these are the things no, that um, um, we would present this in one document before in a lengthy document. No? So the banks will look at this and then qualify it if indeed you're gonna make money or not you know, through a business plan. So so this is some kind of uh, no, so related to. Uh, this part here, the business modeling. So we're looking at that. So how the company will, intends to make money. So there are so many things uh, or tools that have been uh, introduced before now in theory. And these researchers develop some concepts or frameworks to kind of help the, the company's you know, structure, um, how to maximize profitability for, for the company. But right now, um, we have the business model canvas that is very, very popular. So um, there is a, yeah, so, so in, in theory, it's a bit complicated before, no? It's a bit complicated before for every businessman or even uh, an individual who will start a business and ask for a business plan or even a business model so complicated no so there are a lot of things to be considered and uh, there was this guy no there is this guy in uh, 2005 his name is alexander osterwalder he developed this business model canvas that became very very popular today no? so this is a strategic management template used for developing new business models and documenting existing ones if you don't have one no? so for a startup this is a very, very good tool. This is just a tool. No, it will not make you or guarantee you that uh, once you run business, because you have a business model canvas, then you will be uh, successful immediately. No, it's not. No? So it's just a tool. It's just a framework that every startup business may use no? so that uh, you will be able to look into every aspect of the business that you are going to go into. No? So it's just a tool. Again, there's no guarantee, but it will help you refine your business. If you don't have it yet, so you have to make one such that you will be able to capture the entire thing. I'll show you the um, what is the BMC table or the BMC template so that you'll have a better understanding. So this is just a visual chart with elements describing a firm's or product's value proposition. Again, we go back to this, no? the value proposition, the infrastructure that you need who are the customers and the finances needed. So assisting businesses to align their activities by illustrating potential trade-offs. So there are nine building blocks for the business model design template. So BMC that came to be called the BMC right now. So the business model canvas. All right, so um, I, I think we've grouped you already now. I think we have a groupings already. And one of the exercises for you guys to come up with this BMC you know, as an assignment later on. Okay, so because we don't have much time in the discussion, you know, that's our problem with the online. All right, so this is the business model canvas. No? So a lot of also um, authors um, came up with uh, di different things. No? So uh, aside from the BNC, Eric Rice uh, also introduced the concept of the lean startup. You know? so, uh, we hope to have uh, plenty of time to be able to discuss as this uh, as well. So the, there is also what they call as a lean canvas. No? So what is the priority for us? 
So yeah, there is a plenty of books that you can read no? and help you out in terms of developing a very good business model. And for this specific um, class or for discussions that we have on business model, we look into heavily on the business model canvas to simplify things. No? So if you have that uh, business model canvas, um, yeah, so every, every startup um, kind of appreciate no, the, the, if, like for example, an investor would want to invest in you, modern day investors would only look at the business model canvas if you're able to really capture you know, everything about your proposed business. All right, so um, yeah, problem customer driven. So um, we define uh, the problems and also uh, who will be our customers no, for these particular products, uh, assumptions versus facts. So whatever we put in here, so this is, uh, these are actually assumptions. No? And it is up to us as business owner, owner to validate it if really these assumptions that we have are exactly true. No? So at the very start, you would say, oh, my customer is the, for example, you have a business now, go back to the Jollibee. Um, you would say, all right, my primary customers are, like for example, those um, parents who are working like busy, very busy people na, in terms of um, preparing food. No, they don't have much time to prepare food, so that's why um, they would buy Jollibee instead. No, take out. So, so that's one assumption. And then you test it. So, so you found out that yeah. So there are plenty of people who buy food because they have, have time so you you kind of have a data no, for that and then later on they realize that well this market segment is just kind of 10 percent five percent of our revenue so it might not be the best kumbaga, best na assumption no, na, uh, who they are our main customer segment no? so uh, every business they have this data no, to support decisions later on um, for, for them to really strategize or adjust their, their business model. Okay. So, for example, even PLDT and Globe. No? So, PLDT and Globe. So, you would think about who are the target customers of PLDT and Globe in terms of verifying assumptions and facts. So, so you would look, look into, uh, okay, so maybe for fixed broadband like the broadband um, like the fiber optics na mga services <clears throat> you would look at the market for example a b c you no know, because you don't expect um, market d and e low income families can afford the broadband you no know, because like every month you have to pay 1500 to 2000 that's that's big enough you no know, for those uh, families under the d and e so, so there is really a, a specific uh, market segment. Uh, get out of the building. Uh, this means that when we test our assumptions, so we have to really get out. No? So you have to ask customers, prospective customers no, of your product or services that uh, if you develop this, would you be able to buy it? How, what is their perception about the product? No? So that's why every food in... <clears throat> Every food in uh, Jollibee, uh, every food in Jollibee, they are testing it. No? So before they launch it to the market, so you, you know that they will ask people to just simply eat it for free, no? for not less than 100 of people. Okay. What do you think about this product? Do you taste it? Like it, it is like when they introduce an improvement to the spaghetti, for example. No? So they have. You have to test the market for that. So before releasing it to the entire, you know, to entire food, um, entire uh, Jollibee stores. So they have to go through uh, certain assumptions and and verify it with exact data. You know? So feedback. So they do that. So they they got out of the building. So for you guys, um, that is asking. Asking people, no, uh, what do they think about your product or service? For example, the transit before the 
the electronic the, the mobile app no for developer uh for here in boot one then the guys asked the tricycle drivers there if uh if they will introduce this product are they gonna use it no so so that is part of testing no uh allowing them to test the the product itself like for free no? so remember when food panda started out here in boot one they started out uh, by offering free free deliveries now because they want to test the market if there are people who's gonna use the platform the food panda to deliver food for them no so and it turns out well there are people who really likes uh the service that the food panda delivers and so when they did that so to capture the customers so they they run this um that they have this um several months no or days uh, in terms of providing the services for free you know, to test the market and test the assumptions that they have. And indeed, they found that a lot of Butuanans order food uh, through Food Panda. And because of that, when they uh, actually validated you know, the Food Panda, then um, Grab Food uh, noticed this and put up the competition near in Butuan. You know? so, so now you don't have only Food Panda, but you now have Grab Food you know, for this competition because they determined that there is a market. So that's the risk no, of running a business as well. So you notice that um, Food Panda shell out a lot of money no, to begin with, to test the market. So that's the challenge of, um, the challenge of every startup no, to test the market. If the market will respond positively to the products or services that you offer. And so, uh, to do that, you need to get out of the building. Now, if you're just starting up, so it doesn't need to spend money, you might want to ask your friends, family members, or even strangers, you know, if they're going to use this, uh, you have a product that you have developed, and then you ask them if they would want to use this product, or even would what they want to like improve uh, improved version of the product. So you may want to ask, uh, is there something that we can improve on? So it's like a survey. No? So it's like a survey. So it's getting out of the building. That's how what we want to like know. No? So really before developing the product. No? So we talk about this in design thinking. Before launching a product, we need to test it out. We need to get out of the building and ask, are you okay with this or not? No? So things like that. So how can you describe your business model? Okay, we, we go to this part. Now, this is the business model canvas, finally. <laughs> so the business model canvas, now this is central to the business model. We mentioned about the nine blocks. So if you look at this template, this you can find uh, the one or the things that we mentioned earlier about the key partners, the key activities, key resources, value propositions, customer relationships, channels, Customer segments, cost structure, revenue streams. All right. So when we talk about, so let's discuss each block now. So there are specific questions here that guides everyone who would want to use this business model canvas template. So this is very helpful actually. Now every time you now, so you have a startup, you might want to uh, look into to this now and answer everything here and then in a glance you will be able to know how your business will kind of run in the future right so when you start so for example key partners who are our key partners so do you need a partner from from the government to run your product services so have you heard about ANCAS so ANCAS is like the motorcycle uh, the equivalent of Grab, no, or Grab or Uber, the tricycle ride hailing um, mobile application in in Manila, no. So they're based in Manila, and I think they have expanded in Cebu and Davao. So they they actually like they they will uh, how many times they've stopped the operations because the government or the MMDA keep on intervening, and somebody said let's give this a chance, no. So. Um, for them, they found partners you now in uh, non-government organizations, even some members of the government you know, to really um, justify you know, because 
you know, in Metro Manila, it's traffic. So, uh, uh, employees or, um, yeah, so the mass public prefers to uh, ride an Angkas rather than a Grab because it's faster, although there's some risk, no? So, so that's how we uh, ask ourselves, no? So, who are our key suppliers? So, we treat them as partners. Now, if you're developing a product and then we need suppliers for uh, everything that we need, so we kind of establish a partnership with them. No? So, so we build partnership through our suppliers as well. Now, to make sure that uh, when we go to full production mode, uh, our, um, our raw materials arrive on time. No? So imagine if you're in a Jollibee store, you're running a Jollibee store or your own uh, Chicken Joy store, and your partner is, of course, Magnolia, for example. No? So Magnolia is the provider for chicken, right? So uh, imagine that uh, Magnolia will stop supplying you because your relationship is not good. Uh, what could be prob probably the cause of the partnership? It is failing. You failed to comply to the terms of the contract that you have. Like you did not pay on time. No? <laughs> For suppliers, this is very important, no suppliers. So, so what are the terms now? Like, for example, every time you deliver like one ton of chicken, the Jollibee must pay, pay for example, 15 days later. No? Or there is a contract agreement already that since Jollibee is a very big company, they, so they can pay in advance, but needs, for, needs the Magnolia to deliver chicken uh, as fast as they can. And so these are relationships that we need to build no? if we are running a business. So partners, suppliers are very, very important to run a business. Okay. So motivations for partnerships. So automation and economy, reduction of risk and uncertainty, acquisition of particular resources and activities. So we would want to make sure you know, that uh, our business are running smoothly with uh, the supplies that we get from our suppliers and our partners. So there will be no constraints you know, So to, to maximize you know, the the activities of the company. So we need to build uh, on that. Um, key activities. So what key activities do our value propositions require? All right. So when we discuss this, we go back to the most important part of this uh, business model canvas before discussing the key activities. That is the value proposition. Okay. So I think overall, uh, as a startup, this is where, you know, so we need to examine so we need to dissect our products or services or even our company that we would want to have. And so what is the value that we gonna offer to our customer? Are we providing value? Or do we solve problems for our customers? So, so these are the things that we would want to ask ourselves. And so what bundles of products and services are we offering to each customer segment? If we have different customer segments, now, which customer needs? Are we satisfying? So if we don't have value, then people will not buy the product. Why would I shell out money if you're not offering or providing me value with the products or services that you are offering? So if you don't provide value, then you might not have any customers at all. So that's, that's the, the problem. So we need to be able to capture this. So, for example, the characteristics mentioned here. So, newness. No? So, so, that's why newness. No? So, that's why iPhone, Samsung, Huawei always introduce new models every year, you know, year in, year out. No? They would want to really offer uh, better mobile phones to the, to the consuming public. <laughs> so, so, actually, they, they have a roadmap already. They develop a roadmap in advance that they know what kind of products they're gonna develop an iPhone product in 2025. So what kind of improvements they would want to offer in 2021, 22, 23, 24, 25. And they build upon those existing products that they have already. And so so that's how how this um, electronics company provide um, or develop a roadmap for the technologies. So they think about if you offer these kind of features, what value do we offer to the customer? 
No? So every time they offer customers, no? so uh, so so features. You know our cell phones right now, right? So it's a combination of like you have a cell phone, no, within the cell phone, but you have a camera that the quality now is like close to a uh, digital SLR. Not not quite though, but very very near there. So you have a watch in your hand. So these are combined no features in your cell phone. That's why the value that the cell phones provide is enormous. No? So it's being used at work. No? So so I like go back to the watch. No, I don't even bring my watch anymore because I can rely on the the time that is being provided by the cell phone. No, so things like that. I don't I don't have to bring before every time I travel outside. I have to bring my DSLR camera. Now because you have a high end. Um, cell phones that uh, records videos at 1080p um, HD full HD get captured and also so you don't have to bring all this DSLR which is kind of heavy and then you have to have only your own uh, SLR uh, your your uh, smartphone no so so that's the value that the smartphones are providing us today no? so yeah, so newness, no? so performance, customization, getting the job done, design, brand status, price, cost reduction, risk reduction, accessibility, convenience, usability. So imagine I don't have to bring my SLR, my, my watch, uh, what else? So there are a lot of things. I don't have to bring my notebook to uh, my calendar <laughs> to remind me of the things that I need to do for the day or to the places that I go. So there are so much value in terms of the cell phone. And even you know, guys, that uh, in terms of the features that Google Map is also offering. No? So I can go back to 2017 and uh, still look into uh, on a particular date in which state were we in the US when we traveled on May 17. So you can get back to this data. And that can be only done because you have a cell phone that records your location, that you allow to record the location. So, oh, naday ko sa, naday ko sa Italy katong March 15 or April 15. No? So, yeah, na. so, I was there. So, it keeps on recording events no, for your life no, to, to kind of allow you to go back to those times. So, it's, it's, that's the value of the mobile phones or smartphones that we have right now. So, now, the, the real question is for you guys in your business. Now, what is the value that you are offering to the customer? So you have to go into that, All right? So is this smarter, faster? Is this product going to make change or disrupt the entire way of doing things? So remember, we discussed before how Grab or Uber changed the way we get taxis no? or compared to uh, in 2000 no? so or even earlier that so so really no it changed the way people do things no so because they provided value no so this uh, uh mobile app application something like that these products no? yeah even if uh for example for electronics no so before we always have to carry cash no to pay for or be, bills, restaurant bills to, to wherever we go. No? So pay for gasoline. Uh, we transition it to like the credit card right now. No? So we don't have to bring card uh, to bring money. No? So like for example, my uh, mother-in-law used to have this credit card that's like the maximum it can buy things. One million. <laughs> Imagine that. So, so actually you can go to any store, no Toyota. Uh, let me buy a car. No? So you just use the card because the credit limit is one million. So so it changes the ways, no, the ways that we do business. So so the credit card has its own value proposition. Okay. So it has its own value proposition. So why are we using cards now rather than cash? Now, of course, there's some limitations to the card. No, of course, there's also a warning, a risk no, in terms of overly, overly using the credit card. No? So you might not be able to pay no because of the, the limit. Okay. So are we offering convenience no to the consuming public with the product or services that we offer? So these are the questions. Very, very focused on this because these are this item here 
if there, you will be talking to investor or the banks in the future, especially the investor for startups, they will always center their questions here. What value are you providing? How are you different you now from your um, competition? Like for example, Jollibee and Mangdo, what value is Jollibee offering to Mangdo? They're offering the same burger. Are they offering the same burger? Are they offering the same spaghetti? So things like this. You know? So when we are able to come up with a very good value propositions, I think it's easier you know, for the, the market to embrace our products. So that's the thing. Uh, for example, uh, me and Roland right now, Dagi, <laughs> so I'll just let's recite this example. We are developing the MapX. Now, I think I mentioned this. This is a um, tax mapping platform you now and visualization tool that the LGUs can use. So, they, like the problem with the LGUs, national, no? so 30 billion pesos are being missed you know, in terms of tax collection efforts of the LGUs. And because of the Parang hindi siya updated, no? Ma, hindi siya updated. So what we did was develop this platform. And uh, now, so just an example no, to keep you motivated. Uh, so the LGU put one kind of uh, verbally agree that they will buy the product for a particular XX million. You know? So because they also saw the value that it will improve, you no know, deliver or it will improve their processes and will provide them in return more money that what than more than what they are trying to pay us for the map x okay so this that value so they're looking at tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of pesos in terms of value when they use this platform uh, later on and so we we we're on that already so key activities do our uh, okay. So because we already defined value proposition, I hope that is clear. Uh, what key activities do our value propositions require? Okay. So our distribution channels, what are they? You know, so customer relations, revenue streams. So what are the key activities? We need to define them. So major specifics, you no. Know, so so for us, you no. Know, so what what we need to do, you no. Know, so these are the things that we we need to. So parang just support, you no. Know, the the value proposition that we have and the key partners that we have. What do we want to do? You know? Key resources. Uh, what key resources do our value propositions require? So do we need money, people, and all that uh, supplier? So so those are the things that we need to look into the the part. You know? So types of resources like the physical, you know, do we need equipment? Do we need a building to start a business? So every time we start a business, uh, since I've mentioned about equipment and building, it's a no-no to buy immediately an equipment unless it's really justified. You know, so you know in the cost structure later on, um, yeah, so uh, the, the resources for that, like if you have a limited budget for that and you buy, uh, unless if very necessary, you know, so um you buy things rather than like look into maybe i can rent out first just to test the product then that's it so but then if you really need it then you buy it like for example if you're running a printing tarpaulin printing business so for example lang, so if you're if you're running a tarpaulin printing business you need really a tarpaulin printer right so ordinary printer will not work okay so you have two options now because tarpaulin printers are very expensive. Uh, seguro, it will not be costing you less than 200,000 pesos. I don't know if there's a tarpaulin printing right now that's 100,000 that it's of good quality and will run long term. It used to be a million pesos or even more than that no? because I explored that before. No? So, so, so would you buy it? Uh, at really for, at the start or you might want to rent it out and then if you you question yourself if you rent it out are they are there any key partners who are the key partners potential partners or suppliers that you would that somebody would provide you um a printer a tarpaulin printer that you can just rent out because you might want to run your business lean lean in terms of the resources that you would need no so meaning to say you don't have to spend a lot of money at first so hopefully 
because, well, there are so many expenses that you would consider when you start a business. No? So if really you are convinced that based on your analysis that really uh, tarpaulin printing business will run, no? uh, this will earn money really in Butuan, so you're pretty convinced with that. So, so you buy your own. No? And then that's where the clock is ticking in terms of in terms of like looking into the return of the investment. So the return of investment. Okay. So, all right. So what's next? Uh, customer relationships. Now I think we talk about this. How do we, or what type of relationship does each of our customer segments expect us to establish and maintain them? Which ones have we established? How are they integrated, integrated with the rest of our business model? And how costly are they? And so, um, how do we maintain uh, customer relationships? No, so, every, so when, when they already bought things from us, we want our customers to keep buying from us. To keep buying from us. Samo lang gika. No, so, you don't want your customers to go somewhere else. No, like, for example, you go back to again to Jollibee. If you're I know, in Jollibee, you don't want to give a reason you no know, for your customer now to shift you no know, from Jollibee to McDonald's. So you want that uh, customer relationship to remain. You know, so we have to establish it. So so that's why you would always um see there's this loyalty cards. Okay, so so that is an example of how these uh, companies would want you to remain in them. So Robinson's card, diba? Robinson's card, SM card, Shell card. No, na ka. Every time you have like X amount of liters, so you'll get these freebies. Um, okay, 1.5 liter na Coke. No, so sa una, napay bugas. <laughs> no, so you would want really to focus parang to remain or to really capture that relationship that they will not go away from, from you. No? So they, they you maintain your relationship. So Uban, for example, no, I, I see a simple business. So for example, mga car wash business. So there is a car wash business, I think, in Butuan. Na, they will give you a card. No? So every time you car wash ka sa ila 10 times, then your 11th car wash to them is free. So every time you ten ten car wash, car washes, <laughs> so you'll get a free car wash on your eleventh car wash. So that's how they provide. Parang ikaw rin as a cons consumer, consumer. Oh, okay. Lima na ko lima. So lima na lang. So then I'll get free. So um, uh, it will stick to your mind, no, that you will go back to that particular car wash, uh, provider. Because you have this loyalty card that provides you promise that on your 11th car wash, you will be able to get that. I hope that's clear. All right, customer segments. Um, for whom are we creating value? So this part. No? So for whom are we creating value? Who are our most important customers? Is our customer base a mass market, a niche market, segmented, diversified, multi-sided platform? So, uh, more of this will be discussed on the marketing. You know? So, so is our customer base a mass market? For example, again, we go back to Jollibee, you no know? mass market like from consumer, consumer like E, D, C, maybe B. You no, know? so go to still to Jollibee because of course, um, Jollibee offers a different really value. You know? So that's why I'm also impressed with this company, although it's big. You know? So. It's easy for us to relate as well as an example. So they develop chicken joy, you know, that the taste is entirely different <laughs> the the one you can cook at home. You know? So that's one. Okay. So the mass market, the niche market, very specific. For example, the, the brands, uh, Louis Vuitton. You no, know? if you have a uh, brand bags like Louis Vuitton, so who buys a Louis Vuitton? It's very expensive. Now, of course, the mass market will not be able to buy that. No, so, so class A, class B. So those are people who would buy a Louis Vuitton. No, so for example, even in the car market, I hope it's gonna be clear with you guys. Buying cars, so 
there are also different market segments there. No? So, like for example, uh, luxurious car, like in SUVs, like Toyota Prado, um, Honda, um, like the Mitsubishi Pajero. So these are the top market segments no? that not everybody can afford because the price range for these luxury SUVs are in the 3.5, more than 3.5 million pesos. No? So um, then you have the, after that class segment, you have these Toyota Fortuners. No? So, and Mitsubishi Montero Sport. So those are the class, uh, same class. No? So next to that is the non-SUV, the cars. No? So not everybody can afford the uh, Pajero. No? So there's a very limited. No? So meaning to say there's a niche or segmented, mar segmented market for, for those so those vehicles no? so um so when they do marketing campaign no, for these companies so they know to they know who to target no? so they don't like advertise that to you know, so they have very specific clients already you know, in their list so they know already you know? so you will see a uh, pajero or uh land cruiser <laughs> toyota land cruiser uh, mga congressman, no? so usually more mga vehicles sa congressman, no? so so that's it, right? So if you have questions, if you have questions, feel free to ano, to chat in them in the box. I'll entertain all the questions. Or if you want to openly ask questions to be clarified, please turn on your microphone. All right. So channels through which channels do our customer segments want to be reached? How are we? How are we reaching them now? How are our channels integrated? Which ones work best? Which ones are the most cost efficient? How are we integrating them with customer? Now, if if we're selling, now for example, um, how do we like let our customer know that this product exists? No, so that's one no channel. Through which channels do our customer segments wants to be reached? So. So we have this kind of um, platforms though, that you will be able to help. Like for example, there's no other way for you, I think, to order Food Panda is through their mobile apps. And there, uh, I think you can order through the web, web as well. No? So you cannot order via phone, right? So before we used to order food via telephone call or mobile call. But in Food Panda, you need to make use of the mobile app or the, so that's how they reach their customers. So, so in, 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 in that particular platform, okay? So you would want to know which one will work best. You know? So if you are an MSME offering like simple products, so where do you want to make your uh, products be made known no, or available for people to for them to reach out to you no? so people go to Facebook so there is a marketplace uh, people go to Lazada to Shopee no? so if you're into this kind of business so it tells you how to go through so so you, if you look at this on the upper portion of the business model canvas, it will really define you. Know, it will really define what kind of value do you offer? How are you going to maintain, establish and maintain relationship with your customers who are really your customer segment? So it's, you cannot just simply say it's everybody. So there must be a market segment here that you would identify that will be your first tranche of customers. So what are the activities needed? So it will really define how you go about your business. Okay. So these are the things. Now we look into the cost structure because this is our very important, more important as well. Cost, revenue streams, so value proposition, cost, and revenue streams. So what are the most important now for cost structure? Important costs inherent in our business model. So do you need people? No? So do you need uh, to buy equipment? or rent equipment? Do you have to rent a facility, an office? Or do you buy or establish your own office building right away? So these are questions that we're gonna have to answer when we have our startup. So is, this, is your business more cost-driven? So linear cost structure, low price value proposition, maximum automation, extensive 
outsourcing, or is it value driven? Focus on value creation, premium value proposition. Now, so there are two things here. No, if you look at the statement, uh, are you driven by cost? No, or are you driven by a value that you would want the consuming public to really appreciate it? Now, so for example, uh, you know that in China, right? China, so they're really driven by cost. No, so products coming out from China are really costly, cost driven. No, so uh, remember, I don't know you guys if you were happen to go to. Uh, I forgot the store, no electronic store. Nga. Barato gika, it's very cheap. The products are cheap. Like, uh, it's not here anymore in Robinsons. Uh, do you know that store? Uh, you can buy electronics, USB, SD card, all the things, electronics. CDR King, that's right. Thank you, Harvey. Harvey. No, so, CDR King, really, uh, they start, it's so cheap. No? So, people love to go there. And uh, I don't know what happened now. Like, they went really below the cost to the bottom the cost uh, structure know that now it's difficult for them to like offer a quality product no? so you buy a CD okay? I am not I know, I'm not biased now but I'm just telling some facts because I've experienced that as well no? so I bought that now and then two days three days later you cannot use it anymore something wrong happens. So something like that. No? So, so there, that's a cost driven. Now, another example for a value driven, so that's like the map X that we have. No? So that's a value driven, cost and value driven, but most importantly value because we want to offer to the LGU a value, a good value for them to capture their tax mapping and collection system. Example with this is the product of Apple. No? So, Apple is not really like kind of trying to establish a competition in terms of price war. They're not. They're not telling the people that, hey, we are the cheapest uh, mobile phones out here in the market. So, so we're cheaper than Samsung. We're cheaper than Huawei. They're not telling people like that. Their marketing is really on to the features, the value that iPhone, iPhone is providing. No, So they're centered toward that. So we cannot choose. What are we in terms of the products or service that we offer, the business that we're gonna offer? Are we offering cost or we're offering value? No? So remember also Jollibee is not also in the price war with McDonald's. They're not lowering the price of their chicken joy such that they will gain 100% of the market. Of course, they have this cost structure and then they have this price that enables them to earn billions of pesos every year. <laughs> no? So, so they, they don't do price war. So they provide value that if the customer is willing to pay for it, then they're very happy with it. Uh, it's, sometimes it's a win-win, no? Uh, I think uh, you really have to establish that it's a win-win. Uh, you're providing value to the customer at a price that you think that, well, we're earning money. No? And then for the consumers, on their part, sulit to, no? I paid for 100 bucks, 100 pesos for this product and sulit siya, no? And then people will still continue to buy. No? But if people buy that product at this certain price and they don't find it valuable, they won't buy it anymore. <laughs> now, so, I hope that's clear for you. Now, so, so as an example. Okay, revenue streams. Ah, revenue. <laughs> so, every business must have, must have to earn money. No? So, we exist to really uh, earn money. Even if you say that we are a social enterprise. Um, we still have to earn money to sustain the business operations because if you just give away all uh, the products, the services without any like uh, analyzing your cost and pricing models, then we'll go bankrupt and we'll no longer be in business. So it's very, very important to set a particular um, parang, I don't know, uh, revenue 
uh, model that would enable the business to really sustain, no? to sustain the business. So some questions here in revenue series, for what value are our customers really willing to pay? Okay, so for what do they do currently pay? And so uh, we go back to go out go out on a building because you might want also not only talk about the device itself or the services or the products that you are offering. So you survey, conduct survey. No? So when at least 100 people, you ask them, are they going to buy it or because this technology is very good, but you look into also the price. If again, I'm going to sell this for five pesos or for example, if you have a gadget, no? so uh, 20,000 pesos, you, willing ba ang customer to, to buy it? No? So are they willing to buy it? So, mm, yeah, mm, I like the product, but um, I think um, I, I don't appreciate the value for it, so I cannot like pay out 20,000. So things like that. No? So how are you going to try to, I don't know. So that's why the value uh, should match, no? So match the, the 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 price that you are trying to provide. So, so the willingness for the people to really pay. No? So I, I think I mentioned this also that for a long time, Jollibee has been increasing their prep prices. No? So before a one piece chicken, the rice will cost you 29 pesos uh, with drinks. No? So, so sorry, <laughs> so forgive me when I uh, that was around 2000 no? so 21 years later <laughs> so, I, so i was in college then no? so yeah I, I, yeah so <laughs> so 21 years ago so i graduated so i, I remember really that price no? so because I, I said to myself oh this is my first time to eat in jollibee no? so it was the first time that the jollibee went to kind of went to illegal no? so <laughs> wow so at that price range and now so I think 100 pesos, close to 100 pesos, no? No, one piece chicken, 80, something like that. So grabby and inflation. So, but then still people, even with that price increases, people, the, 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 the thing here is that people are still willing to pay for it. No? Still willing to pay for it. So sometimes uh, there is a balay, you know? so we would order for example, I don't know, because sometimes you miss the taste and then you miss the softness of the product that you cannot replicate it by yourself. <laughs> so, so there's a trade secret in terms of preparing the, the chicken and preparing the chicken and then the way they cook it, the chicken. You know? So there's that uh, trade secret there. All right. So people are still, I don't know, uh, paying for it. So how would they prefer to pay? How much does each revenue stream con contribute to overall revenues? So, okay. Right. Um, are you going to pay in cash? or is, So, for example, no, in, in Lazada, Shopee, so this is where the, the, the topic uh, fo will focus. Now. So, for example, in, in Lazada, Lazada took off really because People cannot pay it. A lot of people don't have like credit cards. They don't do online transactions. Unsay may nakaklik sa Lazada. Sorry, marag ko na ko. Wait for us. Excuse me. So, what made Lazada successful at start? There was there was no Shopee then yet. I remember that I tried to open an account in Lazada in 2013 or 2011 when they started here in the country. There's no credit card yet. Many people don't have the credit card. So what clicked them is actually the COD, no? cash on delivery. So that's how they actually, in terms of the payment, no? so they generate money. Because if they insisted on the public, the consuming public to pay for credit cards, getting a credit card is even harder. No? For people, for us na if you don't have regular income, right? So you cannot buy Lazada. So if 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 even students, no, you can you cannot get a credit card, no, unless if your parents will provide you one. So it's difficult to get a credit card. So Lazada made it easy, no, easier, easier. So that's their value proposition, easier to buy products online, no, and then you just click it and then pay it when 
it arrives at your doorstep. Okay, so that's the revenue, the business model that they uh, really establish. So, of course, as people embrace this, uh, more and more people get on board. So those people with credit card na, so they were able to do that already. No? So, and we know the advancement also of GCash. So you can pay maybe GCash na so. So we tend to kind of evolve not on this. So in the payment structure. So that's the thing. So okay, specifically, um, all right. So there are different kinds of revenue streams. Now, for example, it's mentioned here: asset sale, usage fee, subscription fees, lending, renting, leasing, uh, licensing, brokerage fees, advertising. So if you look at the business model of the PLDT fiber or the PLDT company now, in terms of providing internet uh, connection, so we are into the business model of subscription. Okay, so you subscribe for monthly, then you pay monthly for a fixed, uh, uh, fixed um, bandwidth speed. You no, know? so. Uh, 30 Mbps, you have to pay 1,899, 50 Mbps, 2,200 right now, 100 Mbps, they've lowered it the price to um, 2,699 or 2,599, so somewhere. Uh, that, so that is a subscription. You know? So the business model, how the company earns money is through the subscription. So it's of my line, aside from PLDT. Do you, do you know other companies that are into the subscription? Guys, do you know other companies who are into the subscription? All right. Netflix, all right, Harvey. Thank you. Netflix, that's true, no? Subscription. So you have HD or Pilaka, Pilaka book, PDA access, no? So 550 pesos for for people to have access uh, during at the same time. What else, guys? Any answers uh, in terms of the subscription? Any other companies offering a subscription? <laughs> Are you still there? Check. Okay. Spotify. All right. That's correct. What else? All right. YouTube. Oh, yeah, YouTube, right? Canva. So they are trying to offer this as a subscription. So Canva, all right? Thank you. YouTube. Uh, yeah, YouTube is offering a different kind of service now. No? So if you don't want to have uh, ads, no? so views. Chris mentioned Chris, Jasmine, views. Hansel said, Force Hero, all right? Chris, uh, Canva, iFlex. I fix okay. So these are sub subscription. No? So um yeah, so the thing about subscription, that's why it's very popular because um rather than having it one time payment, no, one time, one time lang. Because cons you, you get a revenue consistently every month. No, so that's the beauty of it. No, so you get revenues every month. Like that it's just that, uh, for example, have you mentioned about Netflix? No, so it's just that uh, you need to satisfy your customer also, no, because they're paying every month. So Netflix, for example, you need to offer <laughs> new movies, new TV series every month, month in, month out, so that your customers will remain. No, because if they say we don't get any new movies, we don't get any new TV series. So it's still worth paying 550 pesos a month. So the consuming public will ask themselves no, for this. So is it still worth it? And so yeah. So so that's that's the business no, side. It's um the best thing about the subscription and, and the internet base is your market is global. No, so there is no stopping there. So if you have a bright idea. Right now, that you want to start, you want to start, and then you have a potential uh, market that it's all over the place. 
no? So globally, who has money, of course, who has money, who has internet connection, mamanagid ang market no? for Netflix. Who has money, who has internet connection, strong internet connection, or uh, high bandwidth internet connection. Those are the target markets of Netflix. So, so, so they will you will continue to really kind of get a a, a consistent you know, revenue stream, right? So that's just one example. How about for other um, like the fixed price? Every time you like buy buy things, so in terms of software or product, so you buy it once. Now, for example, laptop, you buy a laptop, so immediately the the business model right right from the sale of the product that's it you no know? so how about microsoft so microsoft is into also are they into fix or subscription based the software that we have for example if windows 10 then that's that's immediately fixed no bundled in the laptop but if you're gonna subscribe to uh for example the the software you no know, the microsoft powerpoint the office microsoft office the office 365 no, so the business there is, yeah. So you, you're gonna have to look into that. No? So um the Office 365, you have to subscribe, you know, like one time payment for a year, and then you subscribe another. If you run out, like if the year is completed, then you have to subscribe it again. You know? So so you pay once and then you know. So Zoom uh for this. Zoom, no. So we're what we're using as a platform for class discussion. So um, the the business model for them is you can pay monthly or annually, and then if you would avail, no. So you, you look at the the business model. Um, so of course I subscribe to the one hundred persons, no. So meaning to say we can meet and discuss here for a maximum of one hundred persons, and there's only one one. For example, host. No? And if you want to go beyond, they, they have a different pricing for that. So that's how they, they set up the business model. If you want 1,000 people capacity because you want to run all the time a webinars, you know, teach uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of like, you, you kind of use that to make money as well. So you subscribe to a much higher capacity. You know? So 1,000 people or 500 people or something like that. So they have this different price range. So that's that's the business model that they set. So so this is just a meeting even. So they've also a different thing like they call a webinar. So for webinar, that's more expensive. So that's how they do business model. For sari sari store, for sari sari store. So how how did they do revenue stream in sari sari store? Revenue streams as a restaurant. Uh, how do they depend? No, for for, for to to really get revenue for a sari sari store. Our brothers and sisters who are running their sari sari store. So basically, rely on people who go into their sari sari store. No, so you don't see a lot of like publicity going on or around that. Hey, I have a sari sari store here in, uh, for example, in Sinto subdivision where I'm living. And I don't have really a Facebook account. So is there a need for that? So that's the question. So you promote your, hey, we're selling this kind of items. <laughs> so you don't see that a lot. So they depend on people who uh, are familiar with the store, no? so the neighborhood, no? so for example. Uh, but if you offer a unique, Unique products, unique product. Even if you're just a sari sari store, and then you're offering unique products to your sari sari store that nobody else is offering. So that is your value proposition. You have products there that nobody else is offering. You might want to explore, you know, go beyond the traditional way of selling your product. So that's why you go online because you know people are online, and majority of the people uh, are in Facebook. So that's why the marketplace was established, or you establish your own. Um, store in Lazada or Shopee, you know, so things like that. All right. So I hope I hope that's clear. You now the business model canvas. If you put things together here, answer all this as honest as you can, as 
as diligently as you can, you might be able to really set up your business no, no, properly. Look into to the to the different things that uh, you, what, how how you want your business to to run. All right. So this is the business model canvas. We take a lot of time here. I have plenty of slides yet. We're still at the middle now because. I want to emphasize this no? so because we will come up with this no? every team as an assignment. Uh, you, I know you have a startup team already that we discussed before, and I want you guys to work on this. No? So this is going to be part of our assignment for the week. No? So it's already Thursday, and then I want you guys to work on this. So, so for, for your own, no? for, for, for your own education. Okay. Any questions so far? Do you have questions there that you want me to answer related to what we have discussed? Okay. Questions do you have? So, <laughs> so uh, if you don't have questions, I hope that's clear. Now, if you don't have questions, I hope uh, nobody's sleeping already <laughs> now so i hope you didn't have any um quest i mean uh the challenges not of understanding what is a business model i hope everything is clear as far as this business model canvas is um would like to kind of share to you okay any suggestions or any inputs that you want to make no from the class, do you have any thoughts or suggestions? You can turn on your microphone. You feel free to discuss. Are you all okay? <laughs> Are we okay? So we still have five minutes. Now. I'll make use of the time. If you don't have questions, so, all right. All right. So we have one question here. Sir, pag through advertisement like sa Facebook, kinsay customer ana? Ang mga company na nagpa-advertise or mga tao na nag-use sa product? <laughs> so, uh, smiling. So, advertisement, like, yeah. So, this is a very good question no? because uh, Facebook is a platform. No? So, so, for Facebook, thank you, Arvia. So, for Facebook, Definitely, the users are not entirely the, the customers. No? So, kita nga mga users, active users of Facebook, we are not really, really customers of Facebook. So, we are just part of the community and, and Facebook is taking advantage of us. No? So, using the platform. So, if you place an ad, so if you or me place an ad there in Facebook, now, I need to make sure who are my intended audience for this particular advertisement. Now, for example, uh, if you off are offering a product, no? if you are selling a product, so Facebook would allow you, I, I'm not sure if you try this, Facebook will allow you to segment uh, who will be your, for example, who will be your uh, target market. Now, for example, uh, if you're selling a product that you think will sell uh, targeted to Butuan City, so you can set the settings that uh, people in Butuan City. And then do you know the age, the target age of this particular product? So it's open as 15 years old to 65 years old. And if you have a product that is parang, all right, so for example, uh, focus on the elderly only. So you might narrow down the age from, for example, 50 to beyond. No? So, so you can set those those things in the Facebook ads. No? So now you're targeting for, for your ads. No? So you're offering this product. You're targeting consciously now those market segment that you define. No? So, kinsa akong customer? So you need to understand that. So if you have a product, uh, for example, uh, mga senior citizen, so ang maka avail ani so, so you need to set up your ano no so settings na uh, dapat uh, 60 and above lang yun no so when you market that 60 and above so sila ra pay makakita no so meaning to say that ads will only also be on the facebook pages of those senior citizens 
if for younger generation you can set the age also no oh, for example let's see uh pilaman 15 years old to 25 years old that's your target market and if you think that people beyond 25 years old will still be using it so you can expand your parang ano your market reach and then the location in Bukwan city so medyo dito lang gamay no sa because you cannot anymore like you don't have data in facebook na can you participate particular group of people do they earn 100,000 or more every year are these people ba that you're targeting for example if you're gonna place an ad in in facebook that uh, you're selling a toyota vios car no toyota vios car so you need to make sure na dapat those who can afford no because not everybody on facebook can afford for example so but the, unfortunately the thing is that um unfortunately you don't have data for the income no so facebook like i was not asked how much my income per year is in facebook no i don't put my information there no? so so murag broad kayo pud gihapon when they 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 launch that to the public launch murag broad pud kayo gihapon no because you don't have that specific information so that's why if you provide a lot of information there no so facebook will really benefit from that so that's where they earn no so the customer really of facebook are those placing advertisements so there are different ways of looking at that okay so we are not the customers but the advertisers are the customers of facebook and if we place an ad our customers are those we think our customers are no so that's when we target it okay i hope that's clear no i hope that's clear all right so we have one minute left so uh i don't know what, what is the slide next to this okay uh it's 10 30 now so maybe you have still have class so you have questions or comments uh you can still uh in our group chat no add them so we'll continue about this because this is the most important part and and um i would like to ask everybody to um be present on monday no to finish to finish the business model canvas we're a bit tight because we'll be finishing our i don't know by june all right so with that hopefully you learned something different today thank you very much and have a good day goodbye everybody see you on monday now so thank you so i'll i'll check the attendance now so there are only 20 of you 22 all right bye for now bye bye thank you guys thank you guys Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you sir. All right. Have a nice day. Okay, you're welcome, everybody. Bye bye. Okay, Judel, Lord, Ladel, bye bye. Ansel, bye bye. All right, bye bye, everybody.